yes. I haven't read uh, that book, there's uh, Born to Run. Born to Run, yeah. I have it, uh, my girlfriend read it, she put it next to my bed, I'm, I'm supposed to read it, but I'm a slow reader, so I haven't read it yet. But coming from Africa, we grew up barefoot, I went to school barefoot. Um, for the first five years of school, we went to school barefoot in summer, um, which was really cool. So I do believe in barefoot, I walk, I walk barefoot around the house, I walk barefoot in the garden, I go barefoot as much as I can because I like it. But I think it is important to go barefoot every now and then. I never run barefoot. Um, but there is a general trend in the shoe market to, to go towards shoes that has less support and less, uh, not guidance, but all the posting that we used to have in the 80s, especially in the 90s, there was a lot of posting and they tried to, like, if you pronate, they put these hard things in there to make you stop pronating. And most shoe companies are moving away from that now and they basically try and make a shoe that's going to let you use your natural motion and if you do pronate a little bit or this happens then kind of go with it because that's the way your body is made. But um, our bodies aren't made to run on concrete. So I think the Vibram is a, it's a nice idea and it's a nice training tool and you can use it a couple of times maybe running on a golf course or somewhere where the cushioning is very soft naturally but I would never run on on the road or on pavement or anything like that with, with the Vibram shoes. Um, there are other shoes too that has more cushioning than the Vibram. Um, so it's an interesting training tool and I think experiment with it. Um, I have too much at stake well, to try sure. them. <laughs> I could totally understand I'm, that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna try them to see what's gonna happen. It's not gonna make me a faster runner, um, I think.